In this video, I'm going to give you a ton of ideas of what you can do with your Quest 3. But guys, stick to the end of the video because I'm going to give you some tips to help you with some of the biggest issues that you can have in VR. Now, I love VR. I love the community. I love the tech. And I love the way that virtual reality can just pull you from your world into new worlds. Now, I've had about five VR headsets now. And still, every time I jump into a new VR experience, it blows my mind. But I am all too aware that when you first get one of these, it can feel a little bit daunting. You're kind of just thrown in. So here are the things I recommend you do first. Now, the Quest 3 actually brings a load of things straight into the headset pre-installed so you can just jump straight in to some games. Now, there are three of them, and I recommend you try them all out because it gives you a pretty good understanding of how your headset works and what the capabilities of the headset actually are. And it also helps you slowly acclimatize you to VR. And the first app I recommend you boot up is called First Steps for the Quest 2. Now, I know it says Quest 2. Bear with me. I, I know. I know. Now, it isn't the best game in the world, but it very quickly shows you what the capabilities of VR and standalone VR actually are. It sort of holds your hand through a bunch of different experiences so you can work out how your controllers work, but also so you can work out how you can interact with the virtual world around you. You basically get to play with a bunch of virtual gadgets. You can dance with a robot and shoot guns. It's a pretty ritual virtual reality experience. Next, you can load up First Encounter. This now adds mixed reality into the mix. It gives you a taste of how the new mixed reality capabilities on the Quest can interact with virtual reality. It shows how VR can actually integrate with the world around you and it really well shows off the new mixed reality capabilities of the Quest 3. It's a pretty good experience. I recommend you keep your room quite bright because the pass-through is always better in a bright room, but it shows how things can actually interact with not just the space you're in, but also with your furniture and with tables and stuff like that. It's very cool. Now, the last meta preloaded game that you get is called First Hand. Now this is almost similar to the first steps thing, but actually it's going on on how you can play and interact in decent immersive games just using your hands and no controllers. That's right, this thing has got pretty good hand tracking and you can use that hand tracking to be able to play and interact in games and this game shows it off really really well. Now I will be honest none of those games are the best games in the world. They're fun, they're interesting and they show off the capabilities and the tech. I think you want to play them because it will introduce you to the Quest 3 and the capabilities and how you interact with it but once you've played them let's move on to some real fun. Now that you have the hang of your Quest 3 you want to really get into some proper paid games. Now I'm not going to tell you exactly what you should play because there's there's a massive variety of games, but what I will do is recommend some classics. There are two you've probably seen. Super Hot VR is usually a good place to start. It uses a mechanic that as you move around in the world, time also moves around you. This gives you some great VR gunplay, a bit of action, also some sort of almost like puzzly type scenarios. You get to sort of move around in matrix like bullet time and dodge bullets. It's very, very cool and it makes you feel like an absolute badass. Beat Saber is another classic. It's like a cross between Star Wars, Guitar Hero and Just Dance. It's tons of fun and you can expand it with popular music by adding on add-ons if you're really into the game. And it must be good because it's been one of the most popular popular and most downloaded apps in VR forever. Now there are tons of other paid games and I'll quickly throw out some of my favourites. Thrill of the Fight if you like boxing and working out in VR. Walkabout Mini Golf is a really fun and mind-blowingly realistic mini golf experience but also it's just like the most wild crazy mini golf that you've seen it's really really cool walking dead saints and sinners is a pretty good zombie game to sort of get you into that iron man vr is a pretty cool vr experience where you get to be iron man fly around use your sort of propulsors and stuff again another experience that's just amazing in vr the vader immortal games they come in three parts. They're not the most expensive games, but you have to get it three times if you want to play the whole story, which is a bit annoying. But if you love Star Wars and you want to use a lightsaber, that's the way to go. Something like Blade and Sorcery works really well. It actually performs particularly well on the Quest 3, especially over the Quest 2. And that's like a sort of hack and slash sword medieval type game. You have a variety of different weapons and people that come up to you. You can do like a sandbox where you can just fight people in VR. It's very cool. And it's got a great modding ability built into the app on the quest so you can just pick the mod you want click it restart the app and then suddenly you have lightsabers and thor's hammer and all that stuff in vr it's very cool now there are tons more i've just recently played assassin's creed nexus uh, again if you're if you've got your vr legs 
I'll get onto that in a minute. What a game. It's probably one of the biggest AAA games available on the Quest. And I'd 100% recommend checking it out, especially if you're a fan of Assassin's Creed. And one that I am super excited for and I've heard only amazing things about is Arizona Sunshine 2. Again, it's a zombie game, but it's sort of a light-hearted zombie game. I'm definitely going to be buying it. And if it's terrible, I'll stick it in the description and tell you not to do my recommendation. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty awesome. So check that out. Now, all of those games cost money. And if you've just spent a lot of money on a VR headset, you might not have lots of money to spend on loads of different games. But the good thing about the Quest store though is that there's tons of free content. Tons of free games. And honestly, one of these free games is actually maybe my favourite game on the Quest. It's something that I always go back to and I've been playing it for ages and I constantly go back to it whenever I'm bored. That game is Population 1. Now, if you are a fan of Fortnite, this is essentially Fortnite VR. It's obviously packaged a bit differently, but it's all the same mechanics. You've got Battle Royale and funny costumes, and you run around and you pick up loot and all that stuff. But you do it in virtual reality, and it works so well. It's really, really good. And as much as it's not necessarily most gritty, realistic games, it's so much fun. Really, you need to check it out. Another super popular free game. I'm not going to go through all of them, don't worry. But another super popular free game is something called Gorilla Tag. Now Gorilla Tag, I've played it and it wasn't really for me, I don't think, but there's a huge community that really love this game. But essentially you run around as a weird monkey that has no legs and you sort of swing from trees and some people are like amazing at it and I go on and I can barely walk. It might just be because I'm a bit older maybe, I don't know. But it's always worth checking it out, especially because it's free. Now there are some great social apps as well and these are also free. One of the biggest most popular ones is something called VR Chat. Again, I'm not really, I haven't really gotten into that one to be honest. But again, that's probably just me because it's by far one of the most popular things. And if you want to hang out with strangers over the internet and you want to sort of just socialize in VR, that's a great app for it. A couple of other ones, you've got Rec Room, which is sort of, I think, catered more to sort of younger people. I'm thinking sort of teenagers and younger. I went on there and it's a little bit intense if you're a bit older like me. Um, but if you're young, it's probably quite good fun. There's tons of games and stuff like that. And there's places to hang out with other people. There's another one that's a little bit controversial. And people always talk about how much they don't like it. And that is Horizon. Horizon Worlds. Now, I think Horizon Worlds is pretty good. I think people just aren't keen on meta doing their own things because it's a little bit Mark Zuckerberg-y metaverse -y. But Horizon Worlds is actually can be quite a bit of fun. You can go into different places and do stand-up routines and hang out in bars and stuff with people. And there's, again, tons of different little free games on these apps that you can play in virtual reality. Honestly, it makes tons and tons of sense. If you're wanting to get some really good free content, jump on those because there's tons of games built into those games. Now I'm just gonna put gaming to one side for a second and talk about some other amazing experiences you can have in virtual reality. That being, you can essentially experience and test loads of stuff. You can go to the International Space Station and look at footage in 3D virtual reality of the space station and be in space with astronauts. If you head over to the Meta TV app or onto the Explore app, there's normally tons of different virtual reality videos and stuff like that that you can see straight from there. If those aren't enough for you, you can also get the YouTube VR app. And on the YouTube VR app, you can experience anything that people have uploaded to YouTube YouTube, whether that be 2D videos like the one you're watching now, or 3D immersive virtual reality videos, you can watch them on the YouTube app as well. It's very, very cool. And that means you can essentially experience anything that anyone's recorded in virtual reality on your headset in your living room. You can go and travel around the world. You can see sharks and things swimming underwater. Literally anything is at your fingertips. Now, one of the big selling points of this app and something that we briefly spoke about was the mixed reality capabilities. Now, mixed reality is something that I really enjoy and I think actually has got quite a lot of use cases. I don't think it's been perfected and I think more people need to bring more mixed reality content onto this device. But at the moment, one of the things that I really like doing is just taking my mixed reality experiences around with me around the house whilst I'm doing things that are otherwise boring. You can cook your dinner and have recipes put up on the wall in virtual reality that you can watch whilst you're cooking your food. You can be doing washing up and enjoying YouTube videos whilst you're doing the cleaning. You can be doing boring mundane things in 
real life and have virtual things happening around you. Building furniture and you need a tutorial. If you're trying to do DIY around the house, you can use mixed reality to be able to put a screen up somewhere and then leave it and you still have your hands free to be able to do the thing. Now, not only can you do stuff like that, but there are also mixed reality games available. There's the new Lego game that might be out when you're watching this video, but it's not just out yet, but you can play with Lego in mixed reality and build sculptures that animate and come to life. There's a great game that I really love called Demio, which is essentially like a 3D board game that you play in virtual reality and they've made that a mixed reality game. So you can put your board game into the room with you and you can play that. And I'm pretty sure if you've got more than one headset, you can actually play that in like local multiplayer mode. <laughs> How cool is that? That's awesome. You can use this headset to learn something. Now, there's been certain apps that have been around for ages for doing things like learning stuff, whether it be actual official apps for anatomy and being able to explore the body and the internal organs of a body for surgeons and stuff like that. That's very cool. But even just for me and you in your day-to-day -day life, if you want to pick up something new, for example, you want to learn to paint, you can do painting in VR with a canvas um, using an app like Vermillion. And you can also use the mixed reality capability of that to be able to do painting whilst you're with people. You can be looking at someone in mixed reality and paint them. How cool is that? There's also a couple of apps for learning musical instruments that I think are really good and I want to recommend to you. Um, one app I've actually tried on the channel is something called Paradiddle. Again, that's VR or mixed reality. You essentially set yourself up a drum kit and you can play drums in VR. You can even plug in actual pedals into your headset so you can use things like a kick drum and stuff like that. That's just epic. And one app I really like is one called Piano Vision. And essentially what you do is you get um, a virtual piano and you can learn to play piano on your desk. But you can also attach it to a real piano and then it basically turns your your actual piano into a virtual piano that you can see your hands and you can play but you then get like a guitar hero style this is when the keys need to be played and you can learn songs a very different way to how normal people learn music it's very very clever very creative and really really interesting now i do want to quickly go over one tip especially if you are new to virtual reality now there's a big problem with virtual reality and it is experienced massively by someone in my life and that person is my mum now i once showed my mum virtual reality in fact i've done it a couple of times and she foolishly made a terror and this is when i was new to vr as well um so i was also a bit foolish i showed her an app called epic roller coasters it didn't end well. A big problem with VR, unless you are very used to it, you can get really bad motion sickness, especially if you're already susceptible to it. So it's something to bear in mind. If you are someone who suffers really badly with motion sickness, you need to factor that in to whether you want to get one of these headsets. And if you're someone who can have it, you need to prepare yourself because even the best of us suffer with motion sickness sometimes on these headsets. Now there's a couple of culprits, um, f apps running in a sort of jagged low frame rate or with a bit of delay that can cause you to get a bit of motion sickness. Just moving around smoothly but not actually moving in reality. So apps that will allow you to use your thumbsticks to move around, they can cause some pretty bad motion sickness. And even when you're turning side to side, if you can got smooth turning on on any of these apps, if you're turning around like that, it can very much get you to chug up. But do not worry because I have a few tips for you to make your life a bit easier. And as time goes on, it will get better. Sometimes you have to push through i'll get onto this in a minute so bear with me for these people that say no 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 okay you need to be patient with your body because over a period of time few days weeks months it will get much much better some of the apps some of the best games in vr you should wait to play them because you can experience the best version of these apps by just preparing yourself and slowly working your way into being able to be a VR veteran. So what are the tips? What can you do to reduce motion sickness? So first of all, a lot of apps have some really good motion sickness 
accessibility features. That means instead of smooth walking and smooth turning, you can do snap turning. So you just basically snap around when you use the motion stick to be able to turn around. And you can do the same thing with um, movement. You just do like a teleport movement, which means you basically point to the ground where you want to go and you teleport there. Those two things make a huge difference to motion sickness and should be your first steps. The next one is something called a vignette. That is essentially where the edge of your vision gets smaller and your field of view reduces and you get this almost black shadow around the outside. Um, and because if you're just seeing directly in front of you and you don't have any of that, it makes your motion sickness a lot better. As you sort of get more used to your movement around VR and stuff like that, you can get rid of that. I don't ever use it. And uh, most people who play and play a lot tend to not have any sort of those features any longer. There are two physical things you can do in your environment to actually make motion sickness better. One is to put something on the floor that sort of centers where you are. So something like a mat or just a slightly different textured flooring. And that sort of gives you an idea of where you are in your room and that can help with motion sickness. If you sort of know which direction you're facing and you know you're not sort of wandering around aimlessly in real life. And another thing is maybe having a fan facing you. Essentially, it centers your body and gives your body a subconscious sense of direction, which means you tend to not be getting all of this motion sickness as well. I'm not 100% clued up on the science of it, but it works. Now, two things you should 100% avoid doing if you have any of these motion sickness symptoms. The first thing is, if you're new to it, work your way into it. Roller coaster VR for my mum was the worst app she could have tried because she gets motion sickness just driving her own car. So putting her on a virtual roller coaster with no vignettes or anything like that, and she was just being swung around, it was like, it ruined her day. Motion sickness as well, it doesn't just go. If you start feeling motion sickness and you get it gets really bad and you push through it and it just gets really bad, that will be with you for the rest of the day. Which leads me on to the last thing. You should 100% avoid. Whatever you do, if you start feeling motion sick in any way, stop and take a break. You might think, oh, if I just push through, I'll get used to it and I'll be fine. You won't. If you start feeling motion sickness, it's coming. There's no going back. It's only going to get worse. So stop now. Let yourself calm down. Reset yourself. Have a 20 minute, 30 minute, an hour break and come back to it later or come back to it the next day. Now, as much as you will get used to the motion sickness and you'll get, get better over time and you need to push through it in that regard, do not push through with it at the time. If you start feeling it, stop. So guys, that is the first things you should do when you get Quest 3. Is there anything I missed? Is there anything you think actually other people might find useful? If you've got any other tips to throw down, stick them in the comments below. And guys, if you enjoyed the video and you found anything helpful in here, I'd love a like. Come on, engage with the video. It's good for the YouTubes. But guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Woo!